so already i have decided i mean i have described the methodology for uh, production of uh, industrially important secondary metabolites using plant tissue cultures we have seen in detail about uh, chicon in production methodology is the same basic uh, cell suspension culture or hairy root culture everything is the same the only thing is the ingredients and the explant type of explant will vary and uh, the conditions for the preparations will vary so we'll just see uh, the production of uh, in, in uh, insecticide and alkaloids using plant tissue culture method so these are the different insecticides uh, used uh, produced by using uh, different sources explant sources and what is the content yield also is uh, given here so in vitro conditions la uh, you have what is the yield uh is already given in this table so most important one is pyrethrin azadiractin nimbin these are all very common insecticides organic insecticides which are produced using plant tissue culture methods so pyrethrin if you see the one which you get in mosquito coils they are uh, the chiefly the pyrethrin compounds uh, chief uh, source of pyrethrin is chrysanthemum uh, species so most of the chrysanthemum species they produce pyrethrin as a secondary metabolite so many much of work has been done in uh, cinerariae folium species where the ovules uh, uh, were uh, studied for the production of uh, pyrethrin and they contain uh, 94% of the total pyrethrin so depending on the type of the explant uh, chosen uh, you can uh, optimize the yield based on Uh, the various uh, explants like leaf or root tip or shoot tip or uh, node or any other explant you choose you have to optimize the yield percentage so while doing the work uh, they have seen the ovule cultures they have uh, reported 94% of the pyrethrin yield so uh, in vitro methods is definitely uh, gives higher yield than uh, traditional method like uh, extracting the pyrethrin from the whole plant it is it, it gives lesser yield than uh, in vitro method so they have uh, uh, carried out work on undifferentiated callus tissue uh, so they have uh, used 133 isolates and they have uh, got about uh, 0.36 per 0.036 percent yield of pyrethrin so they have seen that the maximum yield of pyrethrin was uh, obtained at the end of lag phase so uh, normally once it enters the stationary phase towards the end of the lag phase and the stationary phase is the best time for production of secondary metabolite so uh, they will uh, check for each phase what is the yield so most of the secondary metabolites are produced only in the during the stationary phase so from the end of the lag phase they will start uh, measuring the yield of uh, secondary metabolites so here pyrethrin is always uh, produced obtained at the end of the lag phase so they have used ms medium with uh, carbon nitrogen phosphorus ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 2 that is the best uh, 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 macro nutrient ratio for a good uh, callus yield and uh, uh, they have also Uh, found that uh, exogenous ascorbic acid uh, was a, a, they it increased the pyrethrin content in the in vitro tissue of tagetes erecta so this is this is another plant which was studied for pyrethrin production and uh, in this uh, they have seen that ascorbic acid vitamin c uh, uh, inclusion of vitamin c in the medium uh, resulted in increase in yield so they supplemented it with the ms medium okay so it depends on each and every plant whichever plant you are choosing you have to optimize it for all the macronutrients you have to optimize it for all the micronutrients okay all the environmental conditions and you have to arrive at a particular uh, decision which gives the best yield so whether sucrose gives the best yield or uh, uh, glucose gives the best yield so for carbon source you have to optimize for nitrogen source you have to optimize whether the oxidized form of nitrogen gives the best yield or reduced form of nitrogen like ammonium nitrate gives the best yield so for all each and every macronutrient which you add as a supplement to ms medium you have to measure the yield so that is how they arrive at the final uh, modified medium for uh, callus culture 
so basically they use the ms medium but uh, to enhance to get enhanced yield they will supplement it with the various uh, ma other macronutrients and micronutrients also and in uh, and in addition they will add elicitor and uh, uh, precursors the uh, which we discussed in the last class in detail they will add uh, specific elicitors for the production of pyrethrin and uh, precursors for the production of pyrethrin so they will uh, do this with many plants they will uh, optimize the conditions with many plants which uh, have uh, shown the presence of pyrethrin so the amount of pyrethrin or the um, the pyrethrin can be identified using gas chromatography or high pressure liquid chromatography so these are analytical techniques to identify the presence of the particular secondary metabolite and then finally they will assay it they will test it by uh, i mean uh, they will test the efficiency of uh, uh, pyrethrin by using it against mosquito larva they will uh, have a known amount of known number of larvae and a known volume of uh, known concentration of pyrethrin and they will see how many larvae die so they will calculate the percentage of mortality mortality and they will equate it to the efficiency of the insecticide so they have seen that it was uh, the partially differentiated callus tissue is uh, giving a best uh, result they have also used root cultures but they have seen that partially differentiated tissue culture is uh, very very much important for pyrethrin production and uh, they could uh, uh, increase the yield as it is so they have used even the shoot cultures shoot differentiated from callus and uh, organized shoot cultures were shown to synthesize a good amount of pyrethrin so bioconversions of readily available precursors uh, by enzymatic synthesis from a cell free homogenate containing plant enzymes and its incubation with they have studied all these things with radioactively labeled uh, mevalonic acid so mevalonic acid is the precursor for pyrethrin uh, one precursor is mevalonic acid and another precursor is isopentyl pyrophosphate so these two are the precursors for pyrethrin production so they uh, found out the various concentration of the precursors which gives uh, maximum yield and they you have to identify the precursor so they used to radio label the precursor and then finally they will identify the uh, uh, precursor by measuring the amount of radioactivity uh, in the uh, produced uh, pyrethrin in the final product pyrethrin they will measure the amount of radioactivity so they will link that with the concentration of the precursors to be used okay so and then they have uh, uh, on one step further ahead they have also identified the gene which produces the particular enzyme diphosphate synthase enzyme this is responsible for conversion of the precursor to the final product pyrethrin so they have genetically engineered the microorganism uh, with uh, they have included this gene into the microorganism and it has given a much faster yield uh, than uh, callus culture also okay so another uh, insecticide is azadiractin so for this they have used immature fruits of neem plants so basic medium is the same ms medium and uh, they have used uh, inositol 100 mg per liter myo inositol as a, uh, a macro nutrient and uh, with the ph adjusted to 5.8 before autoclaving uh, the cultures were maintained at a particular light intensity at 25 degrees and then the plant cells were harvested dried and then uh measured for the amount of azadiractin so they have used uh, uh cultures from zygotic embryos also so embryo culture they have used uh from embryo zygotic embryo explants from immature fruits and then they have washed it with 1% savlon solution the foster phase sterilization and then following with distilled water and then fruits were rinsed with 90% ethanol all these are basic uh, surface sterilization techniques and then uh, they have uh, removed the embryos from the fruit and cultured on uh, ms medium with uh, various hormonal concentrations 
various hormones like 2,4-D, benzylaminopurin. Okay, they have tested it either alone or in combination with other uh, synthetic uh, auxins. And each one has been optimized for the uh, maximum yield of the particular uh, compound. So they have uh, placed four zygotic embryos in one petri dishes and uh, uh, they have seen the response of the zygotic embryos relative to the total number of zygotic embryos cultured. So how much, how many embryos are giving out the maximum yield they used to calculate. And then after five weeks of culture, the calli were transferred to fresh medium for further multiplication and to obtain the plants from them. So that uh, the, using the different methods which we have already seen, uh, they have used uh, root, hairy root culture, cell suspension culture, callus culture. The explant used will be different, but the methodology will be the same as we have seen in the Shikonian production. So for uh, every uh, group of uh, secondary metabolites, you can use the methodology which has been described in Shikonian production, but the explant will be different Medium composition will be different. Precursor will be different for each uh, metabolite. So when we talk about pharmaceutically important uh, secondary metabolites, we have alkaloids, which are very, very important. So they are used as anti-cancer drugs, cardiovascular drugs. They are used as uh, uh, general uh, health uh, tonics and anti-spasmodics, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, for... Uh, when you have cramps or spasm, you can make use of antispasmodics. So main thing is anti-cancer drugs, for, of which taxol is the most important uh, alkaloid, most preferred alkaloid. So this is the structure of taxol, uh, which is produced from, which is uh, normally it was uh, extracted from the bark of taxus brevifolia. It is called the U-tree. So now it is uh, actually, uh, they have seen that it generally contains very low amount of the alkaloid, but uh, uh, since they are the most important uh, drugs for treatment for cancer, anti-cancer, now they have started produces, producing it in tissue culture. So even because uh, the taxes species are very less in number and they have a very slow growth rate, so this is uh, the reason why in vitro, uh, you know, conditioning or culturing is very important. And uh, that is why they say semi-synthetic approaches. So some amount of taxol will be extracted from the plant organ. Some amount of it will be produced in vitro. In vitro. So semi-synthetic approaches are also done. So they have seen uh, that uh, this precursor 10 d acetyl bacatin 3 which is the most abundant precursor in this particular plant, Taxus baketa. So they have used this precursor for the production of Taxol. Okay, so plant culture is the most uh, uh, major source for the production presently. So this is the pathway of Taxol biosynthesis. You have these uh, uh, enzymes, GGTP, that is geranyl, geranyl diphosphate, enzyme, uh, geranyl, geranyl, diphosphate synthase, taxidine synthase, okay, and oxygenases. These are the most important enzymes and they, each enzyme has uh, its own precursor, okay. So geranyl, geranyl, diphosphate is the precursor for this enzyme. The taxin ring is the uh, formation of taxin ring, which is the most important step in the synthesis of taxol is managed by taxidine synthesis, synthase. Again, another precursor in the pathway of taxol is bacatin-3, which is produced by P450-450 oxygenases. Okay, and this is phenyl, iso, uh, phenyl isocyrene ring is the finishing step of taxol production. So that is also may, uh, carried out by the enzyme. So you can enhance the production of taxol by using elicitors like methyl jasmonate. Okay, so they have seen a very high yield with uh, by using this uh, elicitor. So there are uh, two main regulatory steps in cell suspension culture. So they have used a cell suspension culture. The first step is taxane ring formation step. 
and the C13 side chain introduction step. So this methyl jasmonate, it uh, helps in the regulation of these two steps in the formation of taxol. So they have also seen that uh, oxygen, carbon dioxide and ethylene uh, concentration the, can be optimized, should be optimized for maximum synthesis of taxol. And another uh, environmental factors which affect the taxol yield is osmotic pressure and various bioprocessing strategies like whether you use uh, uh, shake culture or whether you use immobili immobilized uh, culture or whether you use uh, cell suspension culture okay or agar culture solid uh, suspension culture so in this case th these are all bioprocessing strategies so they are also optimized and then feeding of precursors or sugars i told you uh, they have sugars like sucrose glucose have to be optimized with the concentration again the precursors see uh, taxol may have many precursors so you must uh, optimize which precursor uh, gives you the maximum yield of taxol so feeding of precursors and sugars are also optimized and then uh, sugar feeding time of sugar feeding is also very important uh, in taxol production so when you feed the sucrose that is you when you add sucrose during the stationary phase it results in higher cell growth and higher taxol level so that is also uh, very important so which phase of the callus life uh, cycle do you add uh, the sugar so if it is sucrose or glucose they will uh, experiment with each uh, each sugar and they will experiment with the time also what time you add the sugar so when you add it uh, at the end of the lag phase or you have to add it in the beginning of the stationary phase or in the middle of the stationary phase so they will see the time the cell cycle uh, and uh, observe the cell cycle and then add the sugar and they will optimize both the concentration of the sugar and the time of addition so they have seen that uh, sucrose feeding during stationary phase results in higher cell growth and higher taxol levels from day 27 to day 42 so the accumulation that is also another thing important thing is once the taxol starts accumulating it has to be removed because it will for any secondary metabolite production you the time of production of the secondary metabolite has to be noted very carefully because once it starts getting released from the callus into the medium it has to be removed uh, promptly otherwise what will happen it will result in feedback inhibition the concentration of the end product will inhibit the first enzyme of the pathway so what will happen subsequently the production will get lesser and lesser so this is feedback inhibition where during the synthesis of any secondary metabolite uh, in a pathway metabolic pathway the final product inhibits the first enzyme of the pathway so when the first enzyme is uh, inhibited the first byproduct or the first intermediate product will not be produced so the finishing end product production will be stopped so uh, this happens in every secondary metabolite production feedback feedback inhibition is seen in every secondary metabolite production so another important uh, thing is to be uh, you know regulated is the uh, prompt removal of the uh, accumulated end product so accumulation of taxol leads to feedback repression and product degradation also so not only the uh, synthesis of uh, taxol gets inhibited it the whatever is remaining also starts getting degraded so that is even more uh, uh, you know it results in a great loss if you are not uh, uh, you know alert and remove the finished product so in situ solvent extraction is prepared uh, is uh, practiced wherein uh, automatically as the taxol gets released immediately it is uh, connected with the solvent extractor where it is it's called in situ that is the connection between the um, um, uh, excretion uh, process and the extraction process so the, it is not separated it is connected so it is called in situ solvent extraction uh, so from the suspension culture it is uh, the uh, medium is uh, 
uh, immediately sent to the extraction vessel where it is extracted and with a particular solvent dibutyl talate so when uh, this also has to be optimized so late log phase uh, extracts uh, when the, they will separate again early stationary phase extracts they will separate uh, and then see which offers the best yield so this is also another important step in situ solvent extraction for uh, such uh, compounds which get degraded uh, even if the uh, yield is less it is okay but when the compound gets degraded then it is a big loss so that, that's why they use in situ solvent extraction for taxol uh, production and then they have uh, used this taxol has been produced in a large scale uh, using 75000 liters uh, bioreactor and many countries are being uh, manufacturing it now using callus culture technique cell suspension technique as well as hairy root culture technique so they have seen that uh, uh, in vitro cultivation technique in vitro production only yields uh, the maximum concentration of taxol uh, like uh, uh, they have got the first patent using uh, suspension cultures so genetic and metabolic engineering have the potential to further improve the levels of taxol and other valuable product in that case they might uh, uh, isolate the gene responsible for the bio transformation of the final precursor so suppose uh, the metabolic pathway has five intermediate compounds instead of passing through each and every intermediate and uh, uh, this will delay the production so they will identify the final precursor and then they will add that particular precursor the gene which is responsible for the transformation of the final precursor to the taxol and that so it reduces the time to a much uh, uh, larger effect so they when they use genetic engineering the time consumed gets reduced and uh, um cost of production also gets reduced so you have to just use the final precursor you don't have to bother about the suppose it has five intermediates you you need to bother only about the fifth intermediate not the, about the first second third and fourth so the cost of production also comes down the time of production also comes down that is the application of genetic engineering uh, thing 